Hi there, uh, John Moore here, and I am a shamanic teacher. That means I teach shamanism. Pretty self-explanatory, I guess. Uh, so you've decided that you want to learn shamanism, or you've been pulled to learn shamanism, or um, a voice has spoken to you during meditation that says, go learn shamanism. How do you find a teacher? How do you find your teacher? So I want to give you a few guidelines. Um, I have had some amazing shamanic teachers. My uh, my main shamanic teacher in along my path has been uh, just somebody that I really look up to and uh, is just completely fantastic. So I want to give you a few guidelines. And, um, you know, it would be fantastic if I could just say, you know what, find somebody just like me. But that's not that's not going to be the best fit for everybody. So the first sort of guideline I'm going to say is that you need to find somebody who you fit with. And the really the only way to determine that is to have at least a good conversation with them about their teaching style, about how the the training goes, how, you know, how how they handle disruptive students, you know, that that sort of thing. Um and really, fig you know, figure out as much as you can if you jive with this teacher, if their style is to you. If you meet with somebody and they annoy the heck out of you or something feels off, um, you know, that's a good indicator that it's you know not going to be a great fit. The other thing is that, um, you know, I never push anybody into becoming my student. Um I offer people opportunities to train with me sometimes, usually, uh, you know, introductory classes or a couple days. And anybody can take those. You can go over a weekend and it's really a chance for you um, to sit with a teacher for a couple of days and uh, also, you know, learn some stuff, learn some skills and figure out if the path might be for you because it's not for everybody. In fact, it's probably not for the majority of people. It, it's not an easy path. Um, it shakes your life up. It does make things a little more difficult sometimes. So that being said, so fit, find out if, you know, if you jive with the teacher, um, find out if shamanism is right for you. I don't recommend getting involved. <laughs> and, and I actually did this. So um, uh, it, it worked out for me. But, you know, um, if you get involved with an apprenticeship, for example, that is a year or longer, um, you know, I went through in the beginning of my training, I went through a year long apprenticeship and then I did some other training and then I did two more years of training and then I did two year, you know, uh, have undertaken two years of teacher training, um, all kinds of stuff. But in the beginning, um, I just dove into an apprenticeship and it's not you know, I'm a dive in feet first kind of person. And if that's you, fine. Um, but when you go into a long program like that, a year or longer, or even a program that's several months, there's something to be said about keeping a co coherent circle, a coherent group of people. And if you don't know that you're going to be able to stick with a program for a year or longer, or if this is a path for you, probably not a great idea to jump in with both feet like that. Um, I had a very clear message from Spirit that this was my path. I met with my teacher over quite a long period of time before she allowed me to uh, enter the appre apprenticeship without any previous training. Um, a lucky me. Uh, I've been able to do a few trainings without some prerequisite stuff, but that's a rarity. That is really a rarity. Um, the kind of thing you want to look for too in a teacher, and I like this is really really important for me. Um, safe boundaries, and you know people talk a lot about boundaries, but uh, that means a couple of things with shamanic teachers. One is um, if I have a client or a student, um, I don't mix relationships, so I am not going to, um, you know. I love my students, I love my clients, but I'm not gonna to go to the movies with you. I'm not gonna go out to dinner with you unless it's a group of students or something going out to dinner. 
Um, I'm not going to come to your house and hang out. You're not going to come to my house and hang out. Um, it's really, really, really important to keep those sharp boundaries. Um, there are all kinds of problems that can happen when that's not the case. So uh, if you find somebody who doesn't have great boundaries in that way, that uh, may not be the best, um, you know, the best teaching experience. Um, the other sort of boundary that I want to talk about, and th this is really hard to sort of get without um, without really sitting down with somebody or kind of studying with them before. So if you can take a shorter class with somebody before you dive into something longer, that's a great idea. So this boundary, um, you know, we sort of refer to as keeping a tight circle, keeping the discipline of the circle, which means um, the teacher doesn't let students disrupt the learning of other students. Um, shamanic training can be very emotional. It can trigger things in people. Um, I have been in classes where people have, uh, not acted like adults sometimes. Um, and I have, you know, I've taught classes where people, um, you know, tried to push past a boundary and it's really important for the safety of everybody, emotional safety, spiritual safety, um, physical safety, even that, uh, the teacher keeps a really tight circle. Um, so let's talk about what qualifies somebody to be a shamanic teacher. And unfortunately there is no seal of approval stamp from any organization. There's no, there are shamanic organizations out there. There are you know, large organizations that manage training, that have certificates and all of these things. And there are teachers who have, you know, these sort of qualification systems. Um, but there's not a real standard. It's not like becoming a doctor or a therapist where you're like, okay, you have to do, you know, five years of training and two years of uh, internship and uh, residency and all of these things. There, there isn't, there isn't that. Um, but Practicing shamanism and teaching shamanism are two very different things. You do have to be a practitioner and you do have to be good at it uh, to teach well. This is not one of those situations where um, people who can't do something can teach it. If you cannot uh, come from a, pl a, a place of genuine faith in the skills of shamanism, faith in the te technology of shamanism, um, you're not going to be a very effective teacher. So you do want to look for somebody who has practiced, I, I believe, um, you know, and not just thrown up a shingle as a teacher. Uh, you want somebody who's gone through a fair amount of training. And I think it's a totally fair question to ask a potential teacher who you're going to invest a significant portion of your life, perhaps significant financial resources with, um, what is your training background? What is your, um, how have you trained? Who have you trained with? Um, and you can probably Google them and Google their teachers and, and that sort of thing. And I'm happy, you know, if people come to me and say, uh, who have you trained with? What's your, what's your training been like? Um, because I have done years and years and years of training. Um, I've done essentially, you know, I, I've tried to figure it out, but, um, you know, in years of training and, and all that, like a, a significant graduate degree program worth of training in, in shamanism. Um, and that includes teacher training. And so I would ask about that. Um, who taught you how to teach is a good, is a good question. Um, you know, and that being said, if you find somebody who hasn't done a teacher training, but it, you feel like is a really great fit and you like their program, um, you know, by all means, sort of, sign on. You can ask about philosophy as well and see how that jives with your sort of personal makeup. That being said, good shamanic training will change you. Um, it'll change you in very deep ways that you will not understand at the beginning of training. And so um, it can be a little hard to grasp that if you haven't, um, if you haven't got actually gotten into training, but um, you know, find a good fit find a teacher with good boundaries, find a teacher who, with practical experience and teacher training and some level of teacher 
experience in my teacher training, we had to teach classes. We had to teach, um, you know, two live people with our with our uh, teacher observing and, um, you know, giving giving feedback and all of that, you know, all of that. And um, so I, I think those are those are some fair criteria, um, you know, look out things for, to look out for, look out for um, people that are too pushy. Um, you know, yes, uh, teachers of shamanism may have multiple programs that they teach of varying lengths and varying costs and that sort of thing. Um, and they will offer them to you. And if they think you're a good fit, they will tell you that. Um, but nobody should be pushy and they should, you know, if something isn't um, financially reasonable for you, they'll either work something out with you or if that's not possible. And that's frequently not possible because sometimes there are residential trainings and there are costs associated with renting a facility and all of that sort of thing. So sometimes they can't, but they should understand that and not try to push you into something you can't deal with or, or afford or, or that sort of thing. Um, understand that shamanic training is a commitment. Understand that it can be very challenging. It is not just like, hey, I'm going to take a course. I'm going to learn some stuff. It's going to be some really deep work. It re requires a lot of self-examination. If you kind of follow these guidelines and sort of look out for... Um, Look out for people without a lot of experience or look out for people who are promising certain types of results um, that don't seem reasonable or, um, you know, I'm going to teach you soul retrieval in two hours online. It's unre kind of an unreasonable thing. Um, so look out for that. Find somebody you drive with. Find somebody who has great boundaries. Ask them about it. Ask them how they keep boundaries. Ask them how they manage a circle of multiple people if you're going into a group training with somebody. Um, if you're doing individual training, and I do a fair amount of this, I mentor, um, you know, students as time allows one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you know, I would say definitely make sure you drive with that teacher. Um, meet with them first. Find out how the mentorship is going to work, how it will work into your life. What kind of things are you going to learn during the mentorship? Uh, what kind of work. So the way that I work with students, and I think this is important, is, you know, we'll meet for a short period of time, once a week or every other week or what, whatever the pace is. And then there's work that they do in between because the real um, practice happens. You know, it's like, I'm going to give you a bunch of stuff. We're going to practice some stuff and then you're going to go off and do it. And then you're going to come back and you're going to tell me how it went and we're going to troubleshoot and then we're going to do some more work. Um, which really is a, you know, a key to men mentorship. And some people have very rigid mentorships where they have, you know, a very specific program and that's okay. Um, but I like to really tailor mine to the student, how they're progressing and what they need at the time, what their interests are. There's so many different facets of, of shamanism that you can study. So with that, I will leave you. I hope this has been helpful. Um, you may contact me through my website or leave a comment under here if you have questions. Uh, I'm always happy to answer that, uh, answer questions for, you know, people who are thinking about um, going down the shamanic path. It's been a good path for me. It might be for you or it might not be. And I'm happy to answer that question as well. Uh, with that, be safe and well, and I will talk to you real soon.